Hello, it's Keith here. Today we're going to be learning how to do a Hello World example on the Neo Geo. Now, unlike some of the other systems, the Neo Geo is a little bit tricky being a cartridge-based system and being as the way it works with ROM. We're going to be looking at a relatively simple Hello World. It's as simple as I can make anyway, and um, this will should allow you to get, get some experience with the Neo Geo and just have some fun creating a very simple cartridge that you can maybe build on later. Okay, well, let's go over to the code and have a look at it. So before we go into this monster of code here, let's just see it actually running and check my code does actually work. And here it comes. Let's speed this up. So you can see here, we've got a simple hello world message on screen here. Okay. So we're gonna to have to go over the code of how this works. I'm only gonna very, very quickly scan through the introduction here because I think it's so long that if you wanted to go into this, we could probably do a few tutorials on just this header. So we're not going to. I also have to say this is based on the work of um, Freem from the uh, Neo Geo assembly program for the absolute beginner course. I took this and I've made some modifications to it. So I can't claim the credit for this. I didn't write it from scratch. So very, thank very kind to them. Thanks for that. So, at first, we, you'll see here, we're defining a few symbols here. These are addresses in memory. A V blank marker, we'll need this for detecting when the screen's being redrawn. An X and a Y position for our cursor. Now you see, when we draw a character to the screen, we're actually setting a tile of what's known as the fixed layer. But so that we draw the next character after the last one, we need to remember what tile we changed last. So we're defining two bytes of memory to do that. Then we've got what's known as the traps here. These are system calls, we need those. Various interrupt handlers here. You can see we're jumping to that V blank and an IRQ request, which we're defining here. We then have a Neo Geo header here. Um, some pointers to dip switches. I have put some very generic dip switches just here that should work at least on MAME. Now you can see here we've got a few various other settings here. I think most of these you're just going to want to keep the same. We've got some jumps to some system events that we have to define and a security code here. All rather annoying. All of this, I don't think you're going to need to change. I've never needed to change it throughout my tutorials, really. The only thing is the V blank that you might need to work with. Now, you're going to see something in this a lot called kick the watchdog. Now, before you all go shouting to Petter, this is an internal thing within the system. What happens is the system has a, what's known as a watchdog service. If the cartridge hasn't kick that watchdog recently, the watchdog will force a reset of the machine. This is so that your arcade machine isn't showing an error message and not taking the money of your patrons. So that's um, that's why these watchdogs are in place. But it does mean that you're going to see in a lot of places in our loops and things, there's these repeated commands that are referred to as kicking the watchdog. So that's what we're doing there. Now we are initializing a stack pointer here. We're doing a bunch of system commands here, enabling the vblank and then here we've got the use interrupt option here. Now these are all relating to system events, so we should never need to really change these. So hopefully you can just leave these as they are. Here you've got an initialization routine as well, which again is just part of the startup. And here is the start button routine. This again isn't something you're gonna need. We've also got some coin sounds. For, for the beginner programmer, we can just ignore all of these, but we do need to define something in their place. Here's the V-blank routine. This will be run every time the screen's drawn. Now, we are marking a V-blank flag, which we may need for later. But um, as I say, generally, this is just stuff that we need to have in place for the hardware to work correctly. And the same with the interrupt requests here. We just need to acknowledge them. Here's the point where our code actually starts. So hopefully everything above this, you can just use as is without worrying too much. But as I say, um, it does need to be there, even though it's rather annoying. So the first thing we're doing is giving that watchdog a kick again. And then we're defining some colors. We're defining a blue background and we're defining a yellow color for color 15, which we're going to be using as our font. Now our font's going to be using the fixed layer. This is an eight by eight tile map that appears at the very top of the drawing stack. It's worth bearing in mind if you're not familiar with the Neo Geo that the Neo Geo doesn't actually have a normal tile map layer. There's no parallax tile map layers. Every time you've seen some, something that looks like a tile map layer, it's actually a big, big bank of sprites just drawn in a grid. So um, that's something to bear in mind. If you want to know more about that, I've already covered in my platform specific series how to build a tile map with sprites on the Neo Geo. So these addresses are the colors for the fixed layer. We're then clearing the fixed layer and clearing the sprites here. And then we're going to show our message and just drop into an infinite loop here. 
our message is hello world here and we're just aligning it to even because the 68,000 processors need even alignment of all of the bytes or at least the program code so that's why we're doing that okay so our print string routine here is handling the drawing of a string our strings are 255 terminated in these tutorials I know it's a bit odd but that's the way I do things and um, that's the string routine. It just reads all of the bytes in printing them to the screen with the print char routine, which we're going to look at in a moment. We've also got a new line command that just increments the X counter. If you remember, we defined that X counter all the way at the top here. And then it just resets the X counter. And you remember, we defined that all the way up here. And then it increments the Y counter just there. So that's our new line command. It's this print char routine that we're really going to be looking at today. Now, you're going to notice we never see any mention of a font at this stage. Well, where is our font? It's not bitmap data. Well, it's actually defined in the ROM XML file that we're passing to MAME, and we'll have a look at that in a moment, because that's the really annoying thing about the Neo Geo, to be honest. It's just a pain to get these ROM files set up, but we'll have a look at how to do it. So for now, just bear in mind that it does exist, and we will see it. So here's the code for our drawing of characters to the screen. We're using a single byte, so we're removing any other bits from the parameter passed. The font we use has no characters below 32. The character 0 in the font is character 32 in ASCII, so we're subtracting 32 here. We're then calculating the address of the tile that we want to draw, and our formula is hexadecimal 7000 is the VRAM base. Now that's actually a mistake. These are backwards. Um, we multiply the X position by 32, and then we add the Y position. And the reason for that is that the Neo Geo tile map is actually rotated by 90 degrees. I think the reason for this is that the tile map is 40 wide and 32 tall. And it's very easy to multiply by 32 and quite tricky to multiply by 40 in assembly because we can bit shift to affect the 32 multiplication. So I think that's why it is, but it is a bit weird. Anyway, so um, that's our formula here. And you can see here, we're loading in the cursor X position. We're bit shifting five times to affect a multiplication of 32. We're loading in our Y position here, and then we're offsetting it by two because the top two lines can't actually be seen. And then we're adding that to the count just here. Now, once we've done that, we then just need to work out the actual tile we want to show. Now, there are some system tiles. So the first tile that we're using for our font isn't tile zero. So we're adding hexadecimal 800 here, which will move us into our user defined tiles. And then we're setting palette number one here with this top nibble here. So this is the byte we want to write, and we've calculated the address we want to write to with all of this code here. So we write the address we want to write to in 3C quadruple zero here, and then the byte we want to set in 3C quad triple zero two here, and that will actually update one single tile with one single character. Once we've written a character, we need to update our X position, check if we got to the end of the line, and use the new line function if we have. So this prints a single character to the screen, and this print string routine uses that single character printing to show our nice little hello world message to the screen. So you're probably thinking that's rather a pain, and I'd certainly agree with you, certainly with all that header nonsense. So um, you know, maybe you're thinking, phew, now that's all over. Uh, but unfortunately, we haven't really covered enough to, for you to actually build a game yet. So we're going to have to go into things in a little bit more depth. So that's our assembly file. It's a single assembly file that we can build into a program file, and we need to use our assembler for that. So I'm using Vasm. And I use this long script to do that. Now you can see here, most of this first bit is just error checking, checking the um, environment set up correctly. So um, you shouldn't need to do that if you've got your own environment and you've done it right. But um, because I pass these tutorials out to other people and sometimes they uh, haven't extracted the files correctly or they're running it from another location. So I, I put a few extra error checks in that you won't need to worry about on your own system. Now, the first thing we're doing is we're specifying the assembly file. You can see it here as a variable build file, but it would be hello world.asm or something on your system. I'm specifying to check labels. This is a really handy tool in Vasm. If you forget to put a tab at the start of your command like that, which I often used to do, um, that will be treated as a label and your program will probably miss its return and crash. So having Vasm check out if your labels look suspiciously like commands will help you a lot and save you a lot of time. I'm disabling case sensitivity. I'm specifying to output a binary file. I'm specifying to use the 68000 processor. And we are specifying a dev pack format. Now, I think some of the code here actually will require this. I think some of it, maybe some of the header code. I think maybe some of the header code doesn't compile correctly for the 68000. 
for the Neo Geo without that. So that's not something I usually have to use, but it is required for this example. And um, I'm outputting a symbol called VASM here. I don't actually use it. It's in case I ever needed to change to a different assembler later. I can have conditional code in that case. And then what we're doing here, outputting a listing file. These listing files aren't something you're going to need in the early days, but they're quite handy if you start having trouble. For example, when I was doing the 68000 tutorials, I found out that VASM was actually doing a lot of, um, of optimization I didn't know about. And my code, I was trying to write code that was going to crash because of relocation and things. It wasn't crashing, and it was like, well, it's because VASM's changing things. So um, it, it, having a listing file will help you with that. Also, if you're doing complex maths with regards to labels, you might find that during the second pass, the maths isn't quite working how you expect, and it will help you check out that kind of thing as well. I'm defining a symbol called Build Neo. This is for some of my multi-platform code. The first example doesn't need that, but it might be helpful for the second one, which we're going to look at in a moment. And I'm outputting a file called cart.p. Okay. So we've built a cartridge file. I'm now using some Neo Geo special commands. There's one here that flips all the bytes around, changing the endian order. And then there's one here that just pads the file out. So these will convert it to a valid file. And then I transfer it to my ROMs folder here, which is what I've specified as the working path of the copy of MAME I'm using. Okay. Unfortunately, that's a bit of a pain as well, but we've still not covered it all. We've got this XML file. We're going to have a look at it in a moment, but you can see I've got a program called Make Neo Geo Hash, which is a little program I wrote myself. And this calculates the checksums and sizes of certain files within the, within the cartridge. And there's a template here, and it will add the valid checksums from that template into the NeoGeo.xml that we're going to look at right now. Once we've got that NeoGeo XML, we're just starting MAME with the name of the cartridge and with a few graphical options there. So here's the XML. Now, the game name is the one here that we just specified with loading MAME. And you can see there's some various bits here. So... <coughs> so the program code we just compiled is just here. This is how it actually ends up being installed into the memory. And you can see there's the word swap option here, which is why we had to do that switching earlier. Now, when it comes to the font that we were using in today's example, it's actually being loaded in just here. Now, this file has already been pre-compiled for today's example. If you want to create your own font, you can use my AcroSprite editor, which is free and open source. You can see the font here. And if we go to the 68000 menu and Neo Geo, you can save a fixed bitmap here. And that will be in the correct format. Now, in addition to the font, you can see I've got another file, rawneo.fix. This is for some of my other examples. So that's not needed by today's example, but um, it, there's no harm having it. And you can see also I've got some sprites here for a sprite example. Now, it's important to notice that this file and these file, files here are actually system files. The um, Neo Geo boot up sequence with the Neo Geo logo, ProGear spec, blah, 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 that needs its own sprites. So if you mess with those, you'll find that all gets corrupt. So I've left those well alone, but it does mean that by default, your, your minimal XML file is still going to be pretty big. Now you'll see there's various CRCs and file sizes here. If your CRCs are wrong, MAME will just complain a little bit. It will take a little bit longer to start, but it will still work okay. If your file sizes are wrong, you can end up in a quite serious problem because when the sprite file sizes were wrong, it was causing it to crash. So, um, so that's something to be careful of. Now, the way I do it is I've got this template file and my little program that I wrote will actually calculate the size CRC and SHA from these little symbols here and it will look at the file name and then we'll work them out automatically and just insert them into this template. So that's how I avoid getting the error messages and having to worry about calculating the checksums. But as I say, however you do things, if you don't have valid checksums, you're gonna get error messages. And if you don't have valid sizes, you could get crashes. So just be careful with that. Now, as I say, it's a bit of a pain, but that's what the Neo Geo programming is like. Okay, we saw a very simple Hello World, but as part of these tutorials, I do extend things just a little bit more, and I do give a second example with some simple monitor tools that I think are, are something that might help you out just starting off. Now, we're not gonna go into how these work, but there's a few extra symbols included here. I just wanna show you them to see if you maybe think they're useful to you. So we're including these here, and these provide two new commands. A command called monitor here, which will show all of our registers to screen, and a mem dump, which will show an area of memory to screen in hexadecimal and ASCII. And all these need are the print, J, 
chart and new line routines, which is why we define them just here in this format. So if I fire this up now, see our Neo Geo emulator is gradually getting there. We'll just fast forward it here. Okay, and now you can see, hello world, you can see all the contents of the registers, the program counter and the CCR here. And you can see an area of memory, which is indeed very boring. But if it was more interesting, you'd be able to see some ASCII in just here. So if you're just getting started with things and you need to do some debugging or you want to check the memory map and things and use the memory dump to do that, hopefully that'll help you out. But as I say, it's something that I thought was a good thing to have if you're just starting out. And I thought it would be very beneficial to make it available to you. And you can see here it says the XML file. And you can see here it says the XML file has been updated and that's because I've recompiled. And if we just say yes, we saw those CRCs change because this program file has been recompiled. So there we go. Um, programming on the Neo Geo is a little bit of a pain. Um, it's not the easiest system to get started with on 68000, but I know it's a system that does fascinate people. So if um, if the 68000, so if the Neo Geo is really your thing, then you know by all means go ahead and program it. If you're just looking to do some 68000 cartridge programming, though, I'd suggest the Genesis might be the easier place to start for you. But anyway, as I say, whatever system you want to program, I just hope you're going to enjoy programming and find a system that you really find exciting to you because that's really what it takes to get programming. Now, whatever system you want, I cover all of these 68,000 systems on my website and also on my YouTube channel. There's a Genesis playlist, there's a Neo Geo playlist, there's an X68000 playlist, an Amiga playlist. So if you like that kind of thing, please like and subscribe and just check out some of my other videos. Anyway, I'm really glad you've watched for so long. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you're going to try programming yourself. Now, you can download all of the sources and all the scripts I've created today and all of the EXE files. So please go ahead and download that. You'll need to get your own main ROMs because I can't redistribute those. But as I say, please download these um, examples and have a go yourself. Anyway, whatever you do, I hope you're going to enjoy programming and I hope you're going to enjoy playing with the Neo Geo. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.